Welcome to this video and it's Christian from Beyond Premiere and this is the thrilling finale of From Season 2. This video is going to be an in-depth breakdown because there's so much to discuss. To make it easier for you to navigate, I divided the 30-minute video into segments, each connected but covering different aspects of the episode and the overall season. So if you're looking for something specific or seeking answers, feel free to jump ahead to the relevant section. Let's dive right in. Segment number one is Tabby escapes. So the episode 10 ending, we see Tabby waking up in a hospital, disoriented and confused about her surroundings. She finds herself in a new environment, surrounded by medical equipment. Dr. Brody enters the room and begins to explain Tabby's situation. Dr. Brody informs Tabby that she was found unconscious in the woods by a pair of hikers just three days ago. Tabby is shocked by this revelation and she has no memory of how she ended up there, what happened to her. The doctor's explanation deeper her confusion and leads her grappling to make sense of the situation. Tabby's shock turns into a state of denial as she struggles to process the information she has been given. She finds it difficult to accept that she was able to escape. The question she may have in this moment is how she's going to return back to Ethan, Jim, and Julie, but also holding a state of worry on what happened to Julie. She thought going to the lighthouse was going to allow her to fix everything. The disconnect between her recollections and the reality presented to her intensifies her disbelief, leaving her searching for answers and trying to make sense of what has happened to her. Of course, the question now that we all have is how she's going to find a way to return to the town, but also if she's going to go back the exact time she left or if time moves differently. Her journey to understand the events that led her to the hospital bed becomes an important journey for the character arc and sets the stage for further developments in her storyline in future seasons something that we have seen so far in the episodes. But let's recap. She has been having dreams and visions of children and the tower that we saw in back in season one, the same tower that she's in this episode, The Lighthouse, which she believes are connected to the salvation of this town. So the tower has a lot of similarities of what she saw in her dreams from the car to the card is also in this episode. In episode 10, Tabby learned from Victor that his mother mentioned a special tree that could lead her to the tower where she believes the children are. Tabby follows Victor to the tree and discovers a pathway through the tree that leads her to the lighthouse. Tabby believes that going to this lighthouse is the only way to find true answers and potentially save the others like Julie. However, as we soon discover, this allow her to escape the town. Tabby explained how she's willing to take risks and seek out the unknown in the hopes of a better outcome. While Jam appears more cautious, possibly scared by past experiences, Julie's situation provides a motivation for Tabby's decision to seek out the tower. To the tower. Another push is Thomas dead, as we know, something that we have seen since the beginning of the show. Tabby's escape from the nightmare of From and her subsequent awakening in the hospital signifies a pivotal moment of transition and sets the stage for new discoveries and challenges that lie ahead for her character. I mean, talk about symbolism, she goes into the bottle tree and that sounds a lot like Bodhi tree. This is where Buddha got enlightenment, similar to the character. The children that Tabby has seen represent the innocence, purity, and possibility of a better future. Tabby's fascination with the children and her desire to find the lighthouse or the tower as she discovers from Victor's mom's story and save them reflect her belief in the power of hope and her relentless pursuit of a solution. As she learns more about the secrets of the town and confronts the darkness within, her experiences in the cave and her encounters with a symbol may signify her own spiritual and emotional journey towards finding resolution and understanding. Tabby's decision to pursue the children and find the tower leads her to the lighthouse and eventually her escape from the town. This journey can represent her breaking free from the town's hold on her and discovering a path to freedom and salvation. But the question is how she's going to be back. Tabby saw the children in various moments, whether in visions or encounters, and their presence fueled her belief that there might be a way out and a chance to save everyone. The children were hope for her. Victor in particular serves as a powerful symbol of hope. Despite being an elderly man, he embodies the spirit of a child at heart. In this way, the children and Victor's unwavering hope and belief provide Tabby with motivation to continue her quest. Their presence reminds her that there's always a glimmer of hope. We don't even know how much time has passed in Frumbill and in real life. 
In episode 8, there's a significant moment involving Victor and Tabitha. Victor tells Tabitha about his mother's plan to save the children locked in the tower. According to Victor, his mother believed that if she helped them, everyone could go home. However, we soon discover that Victor reveals that his mother never came back after going to help them and that Victor's mother didn't escape from the nightmare town. Despite her attempts to save the children, she didn't return, leaving Victor to grow up alone in this place. It's a heartbreaking moment that adds depth to Victor's character and emphasizes the challenges that he has faced alone. The question is, what happened to Victor's sister? Leave your theories below. In the same episode, Victor shows his compassion and kindness by giving Tabby some snacks as she goes to search for the lighthouse or tower. This action reflects Victor's caring nature and willingness to help others despite the difficult circumstances they're facing. It showcases his selflessness and highlights the strength of his character, portraying the struggles and heart of the characters in the face of overwhelming odds. But Victor explained that after everyone else died, he went searching for his mother. But unfortunately, she did not make it to the tree and this means that she didn't escape. A reference to the special tree that was supposed to lead her to the tower and rescue the children. This scene implies that Victor discovered his mother's lifeless body, most likely confirming her death to him. I imagine this was heartbreaking for him. This discovery undoubtedly had a profound impact on Victor and the reality that she was unable to fulfill her mission to save the children. The emotional weight of losing two loved ones in one day adds further depth to Victor's character and motivates him to continue searching for answers and helping everyone in this nightmare. Victor leads Habitat to a tree in the forest that he believes is connected to the tower and the rescued children, while the tree he takes her to bears some similarities to the tree back in episode 9 of season 1, there's also some notable differences. The presence of this bottle raises question about who put them there and their meaning within the context of the story. The identity of who put those bottles there is left in question. It could be that someone placed them there as a form of marker or a signpost. And the purpose of this bottle may be a guide, but the bottle is something that we saw also in Tavis' dream back in season 1. The bottles could also hold symbolic significance within the show. In previous episodes, bottles have been associated with the theme of containment and confinement, reflecting the trap and mysterious nature of the nightmare town. They may represent the trapped souls or fractured memories of the children or the past, waiting to be set free like the year 1864 back in season 1. I'm gonna go ahead and discuss that in a moment. The bottles could also suggest other characters or forces working behind the scenes, manipulating events and leaving clues for the protagonist to follow. However, this connects to how Boyd was able to travel back. If the tree had numbers inside and Boyd took a number, entered the faraway tree, he could have had traveled back into Martin's nightmare. But Tabby's action escaping through the lighthouse may parallel the idea of reversible actions or consequences, just like the concept of the bottle tree and the genie being released from the bottle. And once they're gone, there's no putting the genie back in the bottle. <laughs> Once Tavi chooses to escape and leave the town, it may be a decision that cannot be undone or reversed. By leaving the town, Tavi unknowingly chooses to separate herself from the ongoing events and potential dangers that the other residents are going to face. Her act of not knowing she was going to escape may have huge consequences for herself and for those she left behind. Hey, maybe Jim is gonna ask Victor what happened and similar, Jim may go back to the lighthouse, but that's just a theory. But that's something that we're going to see in season three. So what is the reason the boy in white said, I'm sorry, I really am. It can be interfered that the boy in white is referring to Tavi's need to escape and find a way to save herself and the others by pushing her out of the lighthouse, he's forcing her to leave the town and find a solution. As staying in the town may only lead to more suffering and death. You know, the interpretation of this boy and why decision, if it's good or evil, is open to speculation as, as the show leaves it in question. However, in this specific scene, it's possible that he has good intentions in mind, even though his methods may seem harsh. So we will have to wait and see if he's truly evil. I'm going to do a video soon that he is evil and that he is the one controlling everything. Now let's move into segment two, a similar journey that is Jade. So Jade's journey this season was to uncover the symbol and his role in Christopher's rampage throughout the town. And this provided a parallel narrative to Tavi's quest. 
Just like Tappy, Jace is driven by a desire to uncover the truth and find a way to save the town. After hearing about the symbol from Victor, Jay becomes focused on discovering his meaning and purpose. His journey takes him to different parts of the town, where he encounters various obstacles and now dangers. Jay's determination mirrors Tavi unwavering hope. He believes that by understanding the symbol, that this is the key to unlocking the town's secret and potentially finding a way to protect his residents from violence like what happened with Christopher. Despite the dangers he may face, Jade is willing to go to great lengths to achieve his goal. As Jade goes deeper into his investigation, he begins to uncover the dark origins of the symbol and its connection to Christopher's actions. He recognizes the depth of the town's suffering and understands that the symbol holds immense power. Jade's journey acts as a small step of the town's struggle as he grapples with his own fears and the weight of responsibility. And we also saw how Jade's journey converged with Tabby as they both discover the truth about the symbol and his role in the town. That's something that I really enjoyed this season, them working together. But also in Jay's journey, we see the parallel theme of hope and determination unfold. Just like Tavi, who proves that even in the face of darkness and despair, unwavering hope can lead to the discovery of critical information and a path towards resolution. Hope connects to everything, I promise. But also, when he goes into the cave, how this gonna set up season 3? You know, his journey in discovering the symbol, unearthing Christopher's story, and now exploring reveals the dark history of the town and just light on the significance of the children he encounters. The symbol, as we can see, connects to the kids. As he investigates further, he uncovers a connection between the symbol, Christopher Rampage, and the town's dark past. The symbol serves as a key to unlocking the town's secret and understanding the deeper forces at play. But by doing so, Jade activated the evil to come. Jade wanted to discover the symbol so much that unknowingly he went into the place where he got activated with the rage. And I can expect this to happen in season 3. The cave drawings that Jade come across provide crucial clues about the town's history and the role of the children. These drawings depict rituals and symbols that hid an ancient practice and their connection to the supernatural occurrences in the town may symbolize a celestial connection or the passage of time. And cycles. As Jade explores, he discovers the children lying down in the form of seven stones. This scene suggests a ritualistic or symbolic significance, indicating that the children may be more than they appear. It raises questions about their purpose, their connection to the town history, and their role in unraveling the mysteries that affect the residents. What are you hiding? By discovering the secrets hidden in the cave and confronting the dark truth of the town, Jay becomes an uh, instrumental figure in uncovering the town mysteries and potentially finding a way to bring peace and resolution. This connects to when Jade is tying a thread to a tree and this holds significant symbolism in the story. Christy mentions a thread in the conversation about a sweater and this is a reference to this. The act of tying a thread to a tree can represent the idea of connection and interdependence. Just as a thread connects different parts of a fabric, it can symbolize the interconnectedness of the characters and their experiences within the town. This moment emphasizes the importance of unity and working together to unravel the mysteries and find a way to escape, like Tabby did. When Jay ties a thread to the tree, a thread is small, yet it can be incredibly strong when it's added together. This mirrors Jay's journey as he faced the challenges and dangers of the town, but remains steadfast in his pursuit of answers. The mention of a thread in relation to a sweater in Chris's comment about it can imply the fragility of the situation and the character's existence in the town. Like a thread, their life is delicate and vulnerable, and the slightest pull or unraveling can have significant consequences. It adds that to the understanding of the character's survival and hopeful escape from the town and require careful navigation. This is not the only symbolism in this episode, the conversation between Jade and that Tom holds a significant meaning and symbolism, offering intriguing possibility for season 3. Here are some interpretations and theories. The conversation between Jade and that Tom in the bar serves some metaphorical exploration of the bigger theme and mysteries of the town. That Tom as a deceased character represents the supernatural and mystical elements of the town, while Jade represents the curiosity and search for answers. Their dialogue can be seen as a representation of the exploration of deeper meaning and the quest for understanding. This conversation hints at the possibility of multiple timelines or parallel dimensions coexisting within the town. It suggests that the characters may exist in different versions of reality, adding a layer of questions to their experiences. 
The conversation between Jade and that Tom may serve as a foreshadowing for events that will unfold in season 3. Tom's comment about Jade overthinking the symbol could imply that there are deeper meanings and connections yet to be discovered. It hints at the potential unraveling of the town's secret and the uncovering of a more comprehensive understanding of the supernatural elements at play. Given the surreal and mysterious nature of From, there are several intriguing theories for season 3. One possibility is further exploration of alternate realities within the town and the consequences of Jay's action. This could result in characters facing new challenges and conflicts that arise. The conversation is quite profound. It dives into deep topics like existentialism, the morality of choices, the perception of reality, and the duality of danger and salvation, as well as the unpredictability of outcomes. The characters Jade and Tom explore several philosophical and ethical dilemmas. They examine the struggle between safety and the pursuit of answers, especially when it potentially involves a greater personal risk. Tom's ghost or Jade's hallucination effectively serves as Jade in her voice, pushing him to challenge his perceived realities and question his actions. The discussion of natural design and familiarity plays into the theme of fear and the unknown. Jade associates the unfamiliar with being unnatural, while Tom corrects his perspective saying that unfamiliarity doesn't equate to something being unnatural. The dialogue reached a climax with the discussion of moral choices. Tom's statement, you don't make moral choices based on the outcome you expect. You make them based on whether or not you think they're right. This resonates with the concept of the ontology, a branch of ethics which asserts the, that the morality of an action could be based on whether that action itself is right or wrong under a series of rules rather than based on the consequences of the action like the trolley. This conversation acts as a powerful representation of Jay's internal struggles and represents an insightful commentary on morality risk-taking and the search for truth and the nature of reality. And later on, when he before he goes into the cave, he ties a thread, as we know. Even this thread has similarities between Ariadne's thread and navigating through the labyrinth-like cave. The Greek myth of Ariadne, who provides Theseus with a thread to navigate the labyrinth and defeat the Minotaur. It offers an uh, understanding of how the characters could have navigated their own complex and dangerous situation. But in the case when he discovered the seven children in the seven stones, I believe the rules in From are gonna change. Okay, so moving into segment three, and this is Void Sarah, Kenny's journey, oh my. <laughs> In this segment, we're going to discuss the journey of Boyd, Sarah, and Kenny throughout season 2 of the show. And these characters have played a crucial role as well in uncovering the town mysteries and searching for answers to the supernatural occurrences. Boyd in particular, he has made a realization about the significance of the little boy in white and his connection to the Norse rhythm. This realization has sparked his determination to find answers behind the town's secret and understand the role of this mysterious boy in the events that have unfolded after his conversation with Jade. Now, Jay seems to express frustration over the circumstances. It appears that Julie, as we know, is going to the difficult situation, causing her to not be awakened. And Jay's comment about Julie should be picking up a prom dress rather than being stuck inside. It conveys a sense of loss of youth and normalcy. This highlights the abnormal or critical situation that they're currently in. Jade says, the problem is that there's too much we don't know. It's like opening a book and starting from the middle or trying to imagine what a jigsaw puzzle looks like when all you have is a few random pieces, right? And not even the helpful ones like the corners of edges. And he says the trick is that you have to find two pieces that connect and then at least you have a place to start. Now this dialogue with what motivates Boyd to search for Sarah. The little Boyd and White connects to Elgin as well as what Sarah said about the little boy in White. This dialogue suggests about the confusion and lack of information that the characters are dealing with, comparing their situation to starting a book from the middle or trying to assemble a jigsaw puzzle without having pieces capture the difficulty and uncertainty they're facing. Now Boyd believes that Sarah may hold some key information or insight that can help them better understand their situation or navigate the new challenges. You know, Sarah could represent one of those connecting pieces Jade is talking about. Sarah has the ability to hear voices, has proven invaluable in understanding the nature of the entities in a way, and his connection to the town. Her insights and interpretation of the voices she has heard 
could be instrumental in their investigation now where Boyd and Martin was. Kenny, on the other hand, has gone through significant growth as well and development throughout the season. Despite the many problems that they have uh, together, Kenny has chosen to join Boyd and Sarah in their mission to help the people of the town. One significant moment in the journey was back in episode 9 between Boyd and Elgin, where Elgin's dream and memories provide crucial pieces of the puzzle, leading Boyd to make connections and come closer to understanding more. This interaction has been a turning point in their investigation and has given them new leads in their search for answers. Despite the dangers and uncertainties they face, Boyd, Sarah, and Kenny make the decision to go back to town and help the people. This is after the information that Sarah has provided and their determination to make a difference and their belief that they can have a solution to the town's problem is something that they were not expecting that they didn't find any answer. And Sarah plays a vital role in providing crucial information to Boyd about the evil lurking in Fromville. I believe that this is the boy in white manipulating the residents and he's able and that he's really the big red monster, but that's my theory for another day. During their journey, Sarah provides information about the evil force present in the town, so there's someone behind all of this, it makes sense. Now, Sarah's revelation shed light on the true nature of this creature and its connection to the nursery rhythm they have been unraveling. She explained that the monster seeks to cause suffering and excitement grows when it touches Boyd hinting at the connection between the evil forces and Boyd's action. So, the cicadas are in a way part of that monster. This is why the character of Reggie took that decision. Sarah tries to help Boyd understand the gravity of their situation and the consequences of their actions. Sarah's words to Boyd are shelling, forcing Boyd to confront the harsh reality and the potential utility of their efforts. They carry not only a warning but also the weight of the town. Collective pain and suffering, her insights push Boyd to reevaluate his role and actions, challenging him to find a way to stop the suffering without going to the forced manipulation. In Sarah's interaction with Boyd, her knowledge and understanding of this new evil force becomes critical in the quest to save the town. When Boyd returns to the town, he goes into the church. Here he has a conversation with God, God and he expresses his pain. Donna and Boyd conversation in the church is an important moment in this episode. Donna initiates the conversation by reminding Boyd of Catri, who died. She acknowledged that Catri's death weighs heavily on Boyd. Boyd expressed his frustration and guilt, feeling like he failed to fix the situation and only caused more death and suffering. He questions the purpose of his role as the sheriff and wonders if there are any rules or clues that can guide him in stopping the nightmare. He even mentioned seeing his wife in a dream, which intensifies his desperation, but also what's going to happen later on in this episode. Donna responds by reminding Boyd of the impact he has had on the town and the lives he has saved. She emphasized that even if they cannot save everyone, their efforts have given people more time and hope and to cherish the time they have left. Connecting to the wedding. The conversation between Donna and Boyd highlights the internal struggle Boyd is facing. He feels the weight of responsibility and blame himself for the situation that the town is in. Donna on the other hand reminds him to find peace in these moments that they can still enjoy and, and to let go of the idea that he can alone can fix everything. This scene also showcases a deep bond between Donna and Boyd, that friendship, and he's able to understand his inner pain. She encouraged him to focus on the present and the love and connection that they still have. Now what happened that next is Reggie and Reggie's conversation about his love for Regina and asking about the weapons and then shooting Boyd has a significant meaning and plays a crucial role in this episode but what's going to happen in the next season. Reggie says, why do people always ask me when the answer is obvious? This statement sets the tone for Reggie's frustration and anger towards his current situation and losing Regina. When he later on says everything was fine until you went to the forest, here's the reason all of this is happening. I mean, he's right, but you know, shooting Boyd was not something that, you know, is the right choice or decision. Reggie blames Boyd for the chaos and believes that Boyd's action have led to all the suffering they're experiencing. Reggie apologized to Boyd, showcased his conflicted emotion within him, despite shooting him. And by Boyd entering the nightmare world, which is something that we saw with fire, he's able now to stop the nightmare from the music box. But of course, this undoubtedly released more evil that is going to come in season 3. 
I think that the season was more about setting up the evil that is gonna come in season three. So hey, boy getting shot and him able to rescue everyone was a way to finish the season in a really good way and set up season three. What happened next is interesting. Boyd is confronted by Abby, as we know his deceased wife. Abby represents Boyd in her conflict and feelings of guilt and responsibility. However, we get to see how this Abby that we see is actually something real and that she's actually explaining to Boyd about the town's hope and the suffering. You know, this scene explores the themes of hope, suffering, and the impossibility of fixing the situation. Abby's presence symbolized Boyd's desire for redemption and his belief that he could save the town. Abby challenges Boyd's belief and tells him that destroying the music box won't end the suffering, it would only make it longer. Abby argues that hope is what drives people to suffer and continue fighting, and it leads to more pain and loss. This scene highlights the complexity of Boyd's character and his struggle to reconcile his desire to be a hero and his growing awareness of the futility of his efforts. It emphasizes the idea that sometimes despite our best intentions, we cannot save everyone and that a hope can blind us to the reality of a situation. This encounter with Abby, even though it's supernatural and has a lot of questions, makes sense. Now moving into our fourth segment. So one of the themes in this episode is Christianity. We see several references to religion and faith throughout the episode. This can be seen in Boyd's conversation with God in the church, Tilly praying, and Ellis and Fatima wedding ceremony, which includes religious vows. The wedding ceremony itself holds symbolic significance as a representation of hope, sacrifice, and redemption. In the midst of all the chaos and uncertainty that the characters are dealing with, Ellis and Fatima choose to celebrate their love and commit to each other. I was crying in this scene, so <laughs> their union represents the hope or for a brighter future and they believe in the power of love to overcome adversity. It's the power of love. Another important symbol in this episode is the bottle tree, as like I said, connects to enlightenment. There's a lot of themes of hope, sacrifice, and redemption explored in this episode, like Boyd and Tabby driven by hope, searching for answers and solutions to save their loved ones. The role of fate and belief is also central to the story. Characters like Tilly, praying that was something that, hey, Tilly, you could have been wrong. You could have been a mole, but you're a good person. I'm sorry. <laughs> Boy's conversation as well was awesome. And the quote in the, in the quote about Psalm 23 in the Bible, he doctor interpreted as a message of comfort and protection in time of darkness or difficulty. He speaks to the idea that even when the face with debt or challenging circumstances, the presence of a higher power provides courage. Now, when Boyd gets shot, this uh, allows the characters of Julie, Mariel, and Randall to wake up. This is a significant moment, but also what I feel, but also what I feel is happening is that Boyd getting shot would that indirectly impact their awakening, or as we get to see, Jadis was also in the cave. So, but I, I, it connects more to the blood of Boyd as he get, you know, he got shot. Your blood is my blood, and everything that he did. We get to see that the the curse was always in his arm. It was always in his body. It was always in his blood. When he got shot, that curse was was spilled away. So he did save everyone, but he got shot along the way. Moving into segment five, Ellis and Fatima. The wedding in this episode is a significant moment of hope and joy amidst the chaos and the fear that the town is facing. Their decision to get married, seeking a moment of happiness. In the impending doom was something so beautiful and when Fatima said life is a journey through the unknown and through your eyes and mine may sometimes deceive you your heart will never lie this quote resonates deeply with me and it signifies the importance of holding on to hope and love even in the face of uncertainty and if the characters have hope and love then they're all good now the last segment is season three theories number one of course is Tavi's escape from the town as we know, she's going to play a major role in season three. She will become a key character in uncovering the mysteries of the town and finding a way now to rescue everyone. I imagine the connection between nightmares is going to be explored more as we get to see with Boyd. So, hey, and also the big red monster in the case will be revealed to have a larger purpose, maybe an entity that feeds off fear and suffering. But who it is, that's something that can be explored in the next episode. After all, he knows everything that's happening in the town. Overall, the episode leaves so many questions about what we can expect in the next season. I love the show, even though it was 
slow and the answers were not there. And even it was filler episodes, most of, most of them. The show has, you know, grown my channel so much that I'm truly grateful for all the support and the comments in the comments and thank you thank you so much for uh, following me all these weeks i cannot believe this is the finale so i will do separate videos on on different subjects and and things that i miss but what are your thoughts on the finale leave your comments below and theories thank you so much for watching my name is christian from the premiere and i'll see you in the next one bye bye one